Good morning, and welcome to worship at the United Methodist Church, Brantford. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us on the live stream. Uh, it is a joy that with this kind of technology, we can all worship in the same spiritual space, if not in the same physical space at this time. So welcome, welcome to worship as we join together. A few announcements as we begin. The month has changed from February to March, and so our monthly mission has changed as well. Uh, if you still have socks that you haven't brought in, it's not too late. So feel free if they're sitting uh, you know, on the kitchen table saying, this way I won't forget them for church, uh, you can still bring them in. Uh, but our monthly mission for March, as it has been for the last four years or so, is collecting diapers. Uh, we did a little uh, supplemental collection a few months ago because the diaper bank is uh, in high demand right now. Uh, so we always want to, uh, to think about that as an option, but March is our month to focus on collecting diapers for the Brantford Diaper Bank. There is a special need for the larger size diapers, fives, sixes, even sevens. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't buy sizes one, two, three, and four. It just means if you want to think about what is in, in most demand, um, it's, it's those larger sizes. So anytime during the month of March, uh, we'll start making our diaper wall uh, back here behind me. Um, it's fun to see what we collect. And then at the end of the month, uh, we will uh, bless and dedicate and transport all of those diapers down to uh, the diaper bank. Um, March 19th, uh, two weeks from today, is UMCOR Sunday. Uh, used to be called One Great Hour of Sharing. UMCOR Sunday is the Sunday when we support all of the administrative costs of the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Uh, that's our United Methodist Outreach Mission uh, Sending Agency. Uh, so anytime you see a, a natural disaster or a, a need for help around the world, UMCOR is there. Um, Special collections are taken when there's a, a tornado, a hurricane, an earthquake, a fire. Um, special collections are taken at those specific times, and 100% of what's given at those times goes to that particular need. However, as you can imagine, there are some basic operating costs that need to be covered. That's what UMCOR Sunday is about. So March 19th, two weeks from today, uh, I'd like you to consider bringing a special offering for UMCOR. It's really easy. You can put your donation in an envelope, mark it UMCOR. You can, if you're writing a check, write UMCOR on the bottom of the check. Um, but it, it is really important because um, we tell people all the time, when there's a need, when there's a disaster, 100% of your giving goes to that particular need, um, but we do need to underwrite the operating expenses, and that's what UMCOR Sunday will do in two weeks. I just this morning had a volunteer for the March community dinner. So the menu for the last Friday in March is chicken parmesan, and I'm sure there'll be other sides to go with it. So. Um, March is covered. Uh, if anyone's thinking, oh, shoot, I wanted to volunteer for March, April is open. <laughs> uh, so, um, but whether you're cooking or not, uh, that is an invitation. The last Friday of the month, dinner is served at 6 o'clock, and it's just a wonderful time of fellowship. Um, so before you plan your menus for the rest of March, um, write down on your calendar the last Friday, 6 o'clock, dinner at church. Um, a wonderful time of fellowship, and there's always good food to eat as well. Um, I do have blessing bags. We have blessing bags in Connector Hall. Uh, you're driving around town through the city. You see folks who are in need. Uh, a warm pair of socks, uh, some, uh, you know, a toothbrush, toothpaste, some snacks, deodorant, um, things like that are in these bags. Um, there is a way that we can bless others very simply. Uh, please take a bag or two, put it in the back seat of the car when you see someone in need. Just wish them God's blessings and hand them a bag. All right, I think that covers my announcements uh, for now. We do have the uh, prayer cards uh, for the week um, with your prayer prompts on the back. Um, Tweety Bird is saying, Dear Lord, so far today am I, I am doing all right. Uh, I have not gossiped, I have not lost my temper, been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or self-indulgent. I have not whined, complained, cursed, or eaten any chocolate. 
Uh, I have charged nothing on my credit card, but I will be getting out of bed in a minute. <laughs> and I think that I'll really need your help then. I can tell that resonates with more than just me. Uh, so I invite you to make sure you take one of those prayer cards with the prayer prompts for the week. Finally, our gathering thoughts this morning from John chapter 6, verse 16. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. Let us meditate upon those words as we receive the prelude. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Welcome pilgrims on the way to the cross. We are learning to follow Jesus. When God says go without telling us the destination. Show us Christ how to go forward in faith. When rebirth is the impossible way forward. When we find ourselves in the in-between of where we've been and where we're going. Pilgrims on the way, come, let us worship God.
Good morning. The first scripture lesson this morning comes from John chapter 6, verses 16 through 21. Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the Sea of Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But Jesus said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Will you now join me in the unison prayer? The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boat. God, as we meditate upon the truth of your hearts and minds that are open to receive all that you would teach us and grant us hands and feet that are willing to go forth and serve 
as you would lead us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the benefits of reading devotionally and meditatively through Scripture is sometimes you dwell on passages that you may otherwise just kind of read over. These three verses from John's Gospel, I'll admit I've read over dozens if not hundreds of times. And as I read meditatively through this passage over and over in in different translations, it, it filled me with wonder. There's mystery, intrigue, and suspense in the Bible. Anybody do that kind of reading on, on your own, recreational reading? Anybody like mysteries? Suspense novels? All right, L- listen again. It, it's a really short passage. There are only three verses that I just read. Listen again to, to what's happening here. The next day, the crowd had stayed on the shore the crowd that had stayed on the shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat. Okay, Jesus had just fed the multitude. Okay, Jesus went off by himself into the hills. He needed more time to himself. But the disciples came back down to the shore, and they left. And you know what happened? They took. I'm just trying to set the scene for you here. Okay, they took the only boat. And they realized that Jesus had not gone with them. Hmm, doesn't Jesus always travel with his disciples? What's going on? The disciples took the only boat. Jesus was not with them. But here's where the mystery, intrigue, and suspense really happens. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boat and went across to Capernaum to look for him. The disciples came down, they took the only boat, but when the people turned around to look for Jesus, he wasn't there. He had left. What had happened? He couldn't have taken a boat. There was But it got kind of exciting to me, like, what's going to happen next? And so the people went to look for him, and it occurred to me, sometimes that's where we may find ourselves needing to look for Jesus. Situations in our lives present themselves in such a way that we're like, you know what? We could really use a little more of Jesus right now, and he's not here. What happened? The disciples left. They took the only boat. He wasn't with them. He didn't go on the boat with them, but we can't find him here. And so what do we do? We go and look for him. Now, I'll I'll give you a little spoiler alert. Verse 25, which I didn't read, they found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? So Jesus didn't totally disappear from their sight. It's not like Jesus was escaping or trying to get away from the people. Jesus was just moving on, and there was more ministry to do, and Jesus was going to do it. It's only in the, in the perception of the people that Jesus, for a time, was not as close as they would have liked Jesus. Happens, doesn't it? Sometimes Jesus is not as close as we'd like him to be. I see a few heads shaking. Yes, sometimes Jesus is not as close as we'd like him to be. That's what the disciples were thinking in the portion of the scripture that you heard read by Diane just a few moments before I read these last three verses. Where were the disciples? They came down from the mountain. Wonderful time on the mountain. Multitudes were fed. Leftovers were collected. They came down from the mountain, took the only boat, but where did they end up? In a storm in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. We end up there too, don't we? Sometimes Jesus is not as close as we'd like him to be. Sometimes it's not just that he's not around, but we find ourselves in trouble. There's a storm that arises on the Sea of Galilee. And where is Jesus? And it's at that moment... (laughs) when the disciples are in the greatest need, that Jesus appears. He walks across the water to the boat. Now, 
I don't know if you're aware, the Sea of Galilee is not like, like Supply Pond in Brantford where you can just like see from one side to the other and, and maybe if you swim you could even like cross over. The, the Sea of Galilee is miles wide and long. So if the disciples had taken the boat, remember the only boat, right? So Jesus couldn't grab another boat. If the disciples had taken the only boat, Jesus is walking across, but he's in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And, and this was new to me. Again, as I focus more on the scripture, Jesus probably had to walk three or four miles. Have you ever considered how far Jesus walked on water? Right, because some people a bit humorously say, well, how did Jesus walk on water? He, he just knew where the, where the stones were, right? You've tried to do that a few times, right? Walk off the shore and, and pick where the stones are carefully so you can get out into the middle of the lake. But Jesus, I have to believe Jesus, knowing the disciples were in need, <laughs> walked three or four miles across the Sea of Galilee to get to that boat that was in trouble. The disciples were scared because sometimes when we're in the midst of all our own stuff and Jesus is approaching, we may not really recognize that he's coming. It was dark. It was, you know, this shadowy figure that approached the disciples. So how do we survive the storm? First of all, we look up and we see this shadowy figure, and maybe because of what the disciples ultimately realized, maybe we can get beyond our fear a little quicker than they did. Because maybe we can be reminded that in the midst of our fear, in the midst of the storms that we may find ourselves in, Jesus is not far away. The people on the shore said, where did he go? We got to go find him. Notice the difference here. The people on the shore said, where did he go? Where do we find him? And when they went to look, did they find him? They did. He wasn't hiding. But for the disciples, when they found themselves in, themselves in need, Jesus went to find them. Jesus went to meet them right where they were and be the divine presence in the midst of the storm that they were facing. Jesus then became more than a shadowy figure and announced his presence. It is I. And you, you can almost sense the sigh of relief that came over the disciples once they knew it was Jesus. But one more thing happened. Jesus approached as a shadowy figure, one. He announced his presence, two. But three, the disciples invited him into the boat. They welcomed him into the boat. We all face different kinds of struggles and challenges. We may be like the people on the shore saying, what happened? There was a boat. The disciples left. Jesus wasn't with them, but he's not here. We might get caught up in the suspense and intrigue, but when we go looking for Jesus, we find out he's not far away. And so if he's not around, keep looking. Or if you find yourself in the middle of distress, in the middle of a storm, in the middle of the sea, know that Jesus, your Savior, is willing to walk miles across the water to be very present with you in the midst of your situation. He may appear as a shadowy figure, but he will say, it is I, and wait for you to welcome him into the boat. Now, all of our storms are not going to cease as quickly as that one did. In fact, I discovered in this passage of Scripture, there are other stories. Uh, the gospel writers tell other stories of storms at sea and the disciples getting caught in a storm. One of those, Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. That's not this one. But in this one, it never tells us the storm ceased. It just tells us they arrived where they were going and Jesus was with them. So if your storm hasn't ceased like it did when Jesus stood up from the back of the boat and said, peace be still, know that there are times that although the storm continues, 
Jesus is there in the boat. It doesn't fix everything. But we can receive the reassurance of the promise of God's love that when we're in the midst of the storm, Christ is present with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us if we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with a few moments of silence for our personal prayers of confession before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As those who are forgiven and reconciled before God and one another, I invite you to stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ. if you are able for the beginning of the great thanksgiving <clears throat> the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth you brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. 
When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, hosanna in the highest. I invite you to be seated as we continue in the attitude of prayer. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. All things are ready. The United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion table. Everyone is welcome at the table which Christ himself has prepared. I invite you to come forward using the center aisle to receive a wafer and also a small cup of juice and return to your seats using the side aisles. There are baskets on either side for your empty juice cups As you return to your seats, please come and receive the Lord's Supper.
Please join me in the prayer after receiving. We give thanks, O Lord, for this meal that nourishes our souls and strengthens our hearts. May we remain grateful for your sacrifice on the cross and your resurrection from the tomb. For in these acts, you provided hope for our lives, joy for our hearts, and salvation for our souls. This is that time in our service when we share our joys and concerns with one another. What joys or concerns do you bring to worship with you this morning? Diane? A joy. Um, I lifted um, a couple weeks ago my friend Marie who's had a brain surgery. She did have it. They removed the tumor and she's now home. Friend Marie had brain surgery. They removed the tumor and she's now home. Praise God. Amen. genital defect which kind of cropped up sort of suddenly so we can remember her and her mom and sister. Okay, Kaylee is having a heart procedure on Monday. Okay, tomorrow. All right, we will keep her in prayer. Other joys or concerns you bring to worship? Chrissy? Pray for Pete. Uh, son Pete was in a motorcycle accident um, and uh, has some broken bones and a little more that need to be healed. So we will keep Pete in prayer. Yep. A joy. Actually, we have a joy. We have a joy. Yes, because on March 2nd, last Thursday, we were blessed 18 years ago with a beautiful, wonderful, joyful young girl. <laughs> For those who didn't hear, the 18th anniversary of our second child's birth. <laughs> Hannah came into the world, March 2nd. All right, all right. Other joys or concerns you bring to worship? Nothing online, nothing on the live stream? Shanta? Yes, for all the happenings in our world, our country, and the wars that we get in Ukraine. Yes, prayers uh, for all the situations around the world and their countries and Ukraine. Um, we... Uh, also add Turkey and Syria 
and Palestine. These are particular parts of the world that we have been lifting up by name uh, each and every week, and it's appropriate to do so. Um, how many of you know God never tires of hearing our prayers? It's okay to re repeat the same prayer uh, in anticipation of the Lord's answer to those prayers. Amen. Other joys or concerns? Cindy? Praise God. Some signs, uh, some positive signs uh, in Ellen's health. Um, but the joy is a thanksgiving for the prayers of the people, not just the portion of worship where we do that, but literally. No, I'm, I mean this seriously. The prayers that each of you pray, um, not only in this room, but throughout the week. We send out the prayer blasts. You see the, the prayer list in the, uh, the cross and flame. Um, the prayers that the people of God offer on behalf of one another, that's called intercession. And that is a thanksgiving that we support and lift one another up in that way. Marcia. Hi, it's a joy to be back. Um, we're home for a couple of weeks. Uh, Chris seems to be doing very well, so we just wanted to make sure. And um, I'm very thankful that Pat came down to visit us All right, Thanksgiving for a, a visit from Pat down to Florida. Um, came home to check on Chris, but she's doing well. So we, we celebrate that and the ability to make those trips even when they're not planned too far ahead of schedule. So, all right, praise God and continued prayers for Chris's healing. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this gift of prayer because we can share those celebrations of the anniversary of a child's birth, of successful surgery even to the brain in the case where someone can return home so quickly, for the prayers of God's people offered on behalf of one another and the opportunity we have to intercede before you for one another. Lord, when we witness these answers to prayer, we receive the confidence we need to keep bringing you those prayers for healing. We thank you for small signs that show us that you're at work, and we continue to pray for full and complete healing. And when we see it and hear about it in one life, we know it is more than possible in other lives as well. And so our faith grows as we share the answers to prayer and as we share the opportunity to pray for one another. Lord God, each of these prayers, joys, and concerns we lift before you and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We also give thanks for the tithes and the offerings that are shared so generously on a weekly basis. Whether you're placing your gifts in the offering box at the rear of the sanctuary or mailing a check or using online giving, the stewardship that you practice in returning to God a portion of the blessings you have received is truly a blessing to the ministry that God has called us to together. God, we do praise you and dedicate these gifts to you, the faithful generosity of your people returning to you a portion of the blessings that you first gave to us. Lord, bless these gifts 
and send your blessing upon each of us as we use these gifts in ministry to our brothers and sisters in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. each communion Sunday. Not only have we offered prayers together as a congregation, but our prayer partners are here um, during and after the postlude. If you wish to come for individual prayer, a concern of your own or a concern for others, I invite you to allow the prayer partners to pray with you and for you as appropriate. And remember, the light shines in the darkness, and Jesus, the light of the world, will not be extinguished. Go in peace and the peace of God go with you. Amen. <laughs> 